Good evening, everybody. It's good to see you here tonight. Let's stand and sing the call to worship. Go for Shirley Goodness. And mercy shall all the days of my life. pray together. God, we thank you for this day that you bless us with. We thank you for our service this morning. And God, we thank you for what you're going to do in our time together this evening. God, we pray for our students and the adults who will be sharing. God, we ask that you will uh, just calm their nerves and give them the words that you'd have them to say. And uh, God, as they just share what this past the summer meant to them as they attended Fuge at North Greenville University. God, thank you for this church that uh, supports all ministries here, all aspects from our children to you uh, and everything in between. God, we pray that you'll just continue to allow us to seek you in all that we do. We ask that your spirit to go forth this evening, and God, that you will speak through these students uh, and the adults, God, and you'll be honored and glorified in all we do. In Christ's name I pray, amen. You may be seated. Good evening to you guys. It is good to see you. Uh, we are heavy on the left side compared to the right side. Uh, must be because that old Miss fan sitting over there. Nobody wants to sit beside him. But uh, that's a joke. That's a joke. Oh, here we go. There's four of y'all clapping. But anyway... Um, Minorities always want to speak up. But anyway, glad you're here. Uh, as you know, tonight will be the Camp Share Night from Fuge, and uh, Brother Ben is going to take care of that here in a few moments. Uh, so I want to give you a few, a few announcements real quick, and I'm going to turn it back over to Brother Key. Uh, Wednesday night supper started back last week. It was a great turnout. We appreciate you coming, and we appreciate Robert and the ladies there in the back who take care of that. Uh, if you will, make sure you sign up by lunch on Monday. So by lunch tomorrow, we would appreciate that uh, very much. Uh, this morning, I meant to announce, some of you have asked what the boxes were in the foyer. Uh, they are now gone, and all, they were put on the church trailer this afternoon. Uh, but that is 15 beds that we'll be delivering to Trace Ridge's Resource Center uh, for kids in the foster system. Uh, the money raised in Vacation Bible School, as well as some other uh, donors, uh, gave money for that. So we purchased 15 beds uh, that will be distributed in the upcoming days. So we appreciate your willingness to do that and to give toward that event uh, during Vacation Bible School. Next Sunday 
at, at 5 o'clock, next Sunday night at 5 o'clock, if you are helping in the children's department or you are a Sunday school teacher or a substitute teacher or a co-teacher, uh, we're going to have a meeting at 5 o'clock in the Berean Sunday school class about the upcoming church year. All right, so please make plans to attend if you're planning on teaching the upcoming church year. Finally, we mentioned this morning our deacon confirmation took place with uh, Ken Barfoot, Tommy Strickland, Richard Gray, and Doug Strait. Uh, Doug Strait needs to be uh, ordained, uh, so we will have an ordination service for Doug on the 27th of this month. Uh, the ordination council will take place at 4 o'clock in the Berean Sunday School class. The ordination service will take place at 6 p.m. Uh, with a reception to follow. We'll send it out to you on an email, uh, but if you can be here to support he and Mara, I know that they would appreciate that. The ordination council is open to any ordained men, all right? So if you're ordained uh, in the ministry, any kind of ministry or deacon, and you'd like to come uh, sit on that council, we'd love for you to be here. I know that it was a pivotal moment in my personal life, and I know it'll be the same for Doug. So we'd appreciate that very much on the 27th. Does anyone else have any other announcements that need to be made? Any announcements? All right, Jerry T., you got this option of training report? 60, thank you. Brother Keith. <clears throat> Let's stand once again as we continue to sing. Join me as we sing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus.
Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've given us. Thank you for letting us come here and worship you and help this offering go to the needs of your people. Amen.
of things that you can take from that video so one you can take that high school girls love to take pictures of themselves because you see like the same three girls in every other picture um, and somehow these students still know what a disposable camera is that's why some of those pictures were bright white it's really hard to believe that we used to think that was a really good picture um, but that that is why those pictures look the way that they did um, but obviously it's a nice our camp share night and I'm excited for our students to be able to share it was a great week of camp um, this is one of those weeks you always come back. I know for me, um, kind of rejuvenated, it's tiring, it's exhausting, but it's good for the soul um, just to see students respond to the gospel and make decisions um, that changes their life forever. Um, and so it's, it's a good time to have by all, most of the time, um, until it's not, but that's okay. Those, those things happen, but I'm excited for them to share. Um, we went to a different camp this year than we've been in, in the past. We went to North Greenville University, which is in North, uh, South Carolina, Tigerville, South Carolina long trip that's why you saw the picture in the hotel of them at the swimming pool that was my biggest fear was them staying in the hotel one night um, but but they did good so you can be proud of these students they they behaved um, they represented you well they represented our lord well and they represented their families well so i'm gonna give them an opportunity to tell you about it how y'all doing tonight so uh i got voluntold about five minutes ago that i'd be going first but i'm not scared and i'm so, and, I, and I'm going to be bold and share what I learned at camp and what I took away from it. So, first, I just want to thank the church and all of y'all for supporting the youth group uh, in general, but also for the money y'all provide if you go to camp. You know, it makes it less financial burden for those who either don't need the money or just makes it a whole lot easier, more accessible to those who go to camp. You know, uh, over the past, like, I, I, can't, I started coming to this church about two years ago, and uh, when I did, we had 14 people going to camp. It was Ben's first year at camp. Bobby was there, too. We had about 14 people, and this year, I think we had 31, 32 people. I'm not sure on the exact number, but it's, it was really nice to see the youth group grow, you know, about or double over the period of two years. So that was really nice. But it's also, you know, we've had a lot of seniors, we have a lot of seniors graduating this year, and obviously I'm about to be a senior this year at Northwest Rankin, and, you know, it's kind of, you know, reflective on me on realizing, like, where my life is going and trying to figure out, you know, well, how should I carry myself going into that and it's nice to have an example of them to see like what are they doing and try to figure you know this whole thing and figuring out where I'm going to college out so um, obviously you know the camp was about in his image so every year they have they break it up into four different days I don't remember each exact day and what they focused on but basically it was in his image and what the image of God is uh, Imago, Dei, Imago Dei is that how you say, say it um, that's what was what they refer to during camp so you know, basically we're trying to be remade in his image. And so that kind of got me thinking about like what exactly my image is related in and what exactly they do other people think of me. So I, obviously, you know, you have the image of yourself and you have the image of what others see in you. Now, I might think of myself as somebody who goes to church and somebody who's, who is a Christian man, but I have to make sure that what I'm doing and the actions, I, that, the actions that I do and the things that I say and the words that I use are reflected of, of those that would be of God. So uh, one of the th other things I kind of realized, and I, I kind of pointed this out uh, at church group time one night, was about, about how we kind of see ourselves in the South as the image of having, having a, we're in the Bible Belt. You know, we know all these people that go to church. All of our friends are in church, or for, or for a lot of us. But for, like for me, you know, that isn't necessarily the same. I, except for like two of my friends, and I know this, don't, don't, don't judge me for this, but only two of my friends that I know are really true hardcore Christians. And... Obviously, that's because not, it's not their fault. Their parents did not raise them in the church. So I feel like, you know, um, I don't know if y'all have heard the song. It's called The Half of My Hometown. And one of the lyrics in that uh, song is, half of my hometown went to church, and half of, my, half of my hometown got too drunk. And so what I kind of reflected from that was about how, um, you know, in the South, we kind of like see ourselves as like very Christian, but also we have to realize that we're not. You know, Ben refers to 72% of Rankin County being unchurched. So I feel like, you know, we need to see ourselves through that, I, I kind of, that's what I kind of took out of that. And so, obviously, you know, once you get them in the church, it really does change it. Two years ago, I was invited to this church, and obviously, it's 
had a wonderful impact on me. So I just want to thank y'all for letting me get up here tonight and share that with y'all. Okay, so my name's Cameron, and like Landon, we started coming around the same time. Um, that was pandemic year, right after the pandemic had ended. And he took a more logical approach to camp. I'm going to take a more emotional approach. Um, so I, as a kid, I grew up in First Baptist Jackson, and we went to Century Kid, which is very similar. I think somewhere along the way they connect to huge camps. And so I wasn't naive to what camp was, but I had never been to the youth camp. And I was just, I've been excited to go for the past two years. And we usually go on July 4th, and I have family things on those days, so I can't go. But this year I was able to go, and I was so excited that I was able to go. And camp lived up to everything that I had dreamed it would be. And so I just want to talk about a few of my favorite things. Uh, first was we all had Bible studies, and I think we were split up in, like, middle school, 9th and 10th, and then 11th and 12th. And so... In, our, in the 11th and 12th grade Bible studies, we have trust initiatives, and those are two different days during like our recreation time. And the only person from our church that I had in my Bible study was Cole. And we had, first we had trust fall, and it was like, I've done a trust fall my whole life, but when you do a Bible study that resembles like how it's falling into Jesus' arms, it really, it really changes your perspective on everything. And then the second day we did uh, the wall, and it's where you climb up like two and a half people tall, and you have to rely on, I know Cole was a base, and then we had a few people at the top, and it's like very resemblant of how it's gonna be hard to get over things in our life, but when we do get over those, you know, that's why we have accountability partners to help us over those walls. And once you're up there, you can help other people overcome the troubles in their life. And so that was just very powerful. And then also in our Bible studies, we like our leader, he was very adamant the first day. We have a relay at the end and it's very fun. It's mega relay, it's organized mass chaos. And he, he said, you know, all of us want to win mega. But I would rather our youth group, like our Bible study, win missions. And so the first day, like, you collect money in your Bible study. And usually people collect a couple hundred. And so the first day, we all gave some, and he counted. And I think we had, like, 270-something. And so that got us thinking, you know, like, what's the most you've ever collected? And he said $1,011. And we said, oh, we can do that. And so about the second or third day, we had already passed 1000 and then we thought we were going to reach, this is a group of about 20 people. We thought we were going to reach around 1,500. And then when they called us out for winning, we had over $2,000. And so that was just, that was really, I'm going to cry. <laughs> that was very eye-opening because of the amount of Bibles we were able to give people. And so like Cole and I talked about it. We were like, I mean, we were just in shock that we were able to raise that much. And so like, Cole and I, you know, we, we were like, we can give up a Chick-fil-A meal. And it just, it showed how we were able to impact people's lives. And then um, one of my other favorite things, I had Carol as my roommate. And so, like, we were all in our rooms around midnight. But Carol and I just stayed up talking until, like, 2 or 3 a.m. And then we had to wake up at 5 a.m. and go back at it again. And so we were sleep-deprived all week. But um, I brought Christmas lights. And I know Lindsay was judging me the whole time. But I brought Christmas lights and command strips. And I hung them around the room. And it was so pretty. And it was just, it was awesome. Um, and everyone was like, oh, that's, that's cute. But, like, why would you do that? And it was just, it was so much fun. It made it so much fun to stay up late and talk with Carol. And so we got to share, especially since Carol got saved over camp, we got to share our testimonies with each other. And that was very powerful. And then I don't know if y'all saw some of the photos where people look like they're crying. We have what we call cry night, where all of us cry. Um, we really don't know why. I think it's just generally Hudson or AG, they start crying, and then they look like sad puppies, and we all start crying. Um, and so we, uh, it's, this year it was a lot different because a lot of our, see, we had six seniors leaving, and like, especially the seniors and the juniors, but also like with our middle schoolers, we've created this like dynamic that's about to change, and it's about to change like a lot. And so all of us are crying about everyone leaving, and AG's like, Cole, you can't leave me. And it was just, it was very sad. But then at the end, Cole said something, and he was like, you know, we've made a leadership, like, as the seniors. We've kind of led y'all the past couple of years, and we're about to leave. And so he, like, challenged the middle schoolers. He said something, you know, like, don't let your middle school years be the best years of your youth group. And 
Ben had asked us, you know, raise your hand if you are here because someone else invited you. And over two thirds of our youth group is because someone invited us. And so when Cole said that, it was like a challenge to the younger people, you know, you need to be the leaders because like our youth group, like Landon said, was like 12 people a couple years ago. And we grew because people shared their testimony. And Ben gets on us all the time, like share your testimony over and over and over again. And so I just, I wanna leave you with this thought that like your story, not only has it changed your life, but like just imagine how many lives it would change if all you did was tell. Like it literally tripled our youth group all because we told people our testimony. And so that just, that was basically the sum of camp for me. Hey y'all, my name is Jacob. Um, I've been a member of the church for a little over a year now. And um, I don't know if some of y'all were here last year for my camp experience, but mine was a little bit different than from last year. Um, I want to start by saying I didn't really go into camp with the right intentions. You can ask anybody over here. They know exactly what I'm talking about. But um, as the week went on with all like the Bible study and especially in my Bible study, we were talking about how I just started to realize that there's so much stuff that I think is so important. And I'm, I just realized at camp that there's so much stuff that I think is, if something happens, I think it's the end of the world, but it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. And something else that I took from it that uh, I remember on cry night, I was talking about how the music is just every every time you go in there and you worship, you can feel the spirit move. It doesn't matter if you're in there and you're in a bad mood. Like you can go in there and you will feel the spirit. And there was one uh, lyric that really stood out to me in it in the song. It's called "This Is Our God," and it said, "He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim." And I think it was just really cool how it's. Once we get to heaven, we're going to be rejoicing the same God that we have been on this sinful earth where there's no sin in heaven. And I just think that's really cool. And like uh, on cry night, we, everybody kind of said the same thing whenever there was their turn to talk. We were just talking about how the youth group here is amazing. And that's true. Like this youth group has something that my old youth group, my other church did not have. And it's just awesome. And if anybody in the service here tonight knows the youth encourage them to come because it's awesome and I had so much fun at camp and I already can't wait for next year I know mine was a little bit shorter but that's all I got <clears throat> we were told to uh, keep it under two minutes and uh, I'm about to keep it under 30 seconds so <laughs> Um, basically, you know, this is my last, my last camp or whatever that I went to. And, you know, it's a lot of fun. We always have fun when we go. And, um, that can easily get you off point of what you're supposed to be focused on, which is God, right? And, uh, so when I first got there, I, um, I got sick or whatever and I was, I just had the worst time for like three days. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to learn anything from this whole time that I'm going to be here. Because, I don't know, the air quality was crap. The uh, heat sucked. Hills, that was different from the last camp. Um, you know, just the whole environment wasn't, very, wasn't what I thought. You know, food wasn't very good. Anyways, um, um, you know, just I had the mindset. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make, you know, I'm gonna go through this week, just go through the motions and get through it. My last camp, you know, try to enjoy it. I didn't really care about learning anything. And then um, I read, I read a uh, a passage in one of the booklets they give us when you have a lesson or whatever, and it said it gave me a different view of sin. Uh, the different sins of this world are not, are not all that Satan has cracked them up to be. Sin always results in a distorted view of who God created you to be and what God created you to do. So, you know, basically, Satan's going to take the words of God, twist them, and make them seem right, you know, or take them out of context of what they're supposed to be. And I feel like we do that a lot with a lot of different sins in our life. We try to make them seem like they're right. Um, and I've learned that 
you can't do that. You have to actually study God's word and take it in its full context like it's supposed to be um, and apply it in your life. And so the whole mission of this whole camp was to uh, figure out God's image, figure out and know that you are restored. And then once you're restored, once you're put back together by God, you're supposed to take your image and share it with other people. And that is our mission as believers. And um, I feel like we all need to do that or, you know, strive to go out more. Because I feel like even personally myself, I don't, I don't go out enough and uh, share my faith with other people. You know, more, I, you see more religions out there sharing their faith more than we do. And uh, that kind of that opens my eyes and makes me want to um, go out more often for the right purposes, not just to go out and hang out with friends or do whatever, but instead go and do God's mission. And that's basically what I learned from this whole time at camp. And uh, thank you all for letting us go. I'm a little short, so I'm going to have to pull that down. Um, so, I know most of y'all know me. I'm Anna Grace, or AG, a lot of people call me. Um, this was my third year going to camp, and um, every year I have brought a friend with me, or like I have, like the first year I brought one, and last year I brought two, and this year I brought two. But um, when Jacob said something about I mean, Cameron said something about cry night, and everybody was like, two-thirds of the people were invited. Um, that was one of the things I wanted to mainly talk about because I feel like whenever you share your story, you can relate to other people, and you can help them through something whenever they're helping you through the exact same thing because you just relate to each other, and you kind of like feed off of one each other. And so my friends and I, um, we shared a dorm together. And each camp, we always get a camp guide. And we do that during Bible study and stuff. But at nighttime, when we get to our dorms and take a shower and are ready to go to bed, um, I feel like we needed to have a recap of the day. So I told them before we left, I was like, hey, make sure that, like, you know that we're gonna do something before we go to bed because I think it's more meaningful whenever you do it with people that you know and like learn from each other instead of people that are strangers because you don't really know them and sometimes you're uncomfortable with them but you're like really comfortable because they're like your family. And one of the big things that they said for the image of God was like, the first day we looked at the image of God and what we should look like. Then the second day was image distorted and um, how our image is broken and how, like, how the devil has torn us down. But the next one was image renewed. And I feel like we can all uh, relate to that because we all sin. We sin every day. And, but God doesn't. And God took away all of our sin on the cross. And so one of the things that I got out of that camp guide, it said, you can't be renewed unless you have been made whole. And I feel like that's kind of like, you try to fix something that's not broken, but we are broken and we need to be fixed and we need God to patch up our lives and make us whole again. And so that, is, that was the topic for the night that was like cry night. And on the screen, whenever they were pulling up the slideshow, most of the pictures, I would probably look terrible because I was crying. <laughs> and um, so we were, most of us were crying because everybody's leaving and our youth group is a huge family. We all, we were, we're all there for each other. We all love each other. And it's like you're missing a piece of the puzzle whenever somebody leaves or somebody's not there. So that was one of the main things 
for camp me this year because like I know it's all about like having fun with your friends and taking pictures and meeting new people but we that's what that was my mindset when I first came to camp was ooh I want to meet new people ooh I want to take so many pictures ooh I want to do this I want to do that but then when I got there I realized it's not about meeting new people it's not about playing games it's not about taking pictures, it's about God. And it's about learning about Him and applying what the Bible says to your life. And yeah, that's me. I actually told them if they talked for two minutes apiece, that means I only had to talk for five. That was, that was what that was, but Cole took it the wrong way. Um, but. Uh, you hear him talk about cry night, and, and it's kind of it's it's a joke, but it's not a joke at the same time because it happens every year. And usually, somebody starts with a dog that looks like I mean, it looks like a sad puppy face, and then it, somebody else looks at him, and it just happens, right? And people just start crying. And half the time, we don't even know why everybody's crying; it just happens. Um, but Ag was the worst crier this year. She won that award, um, and then she kept wanting to talk. I'm like, I need you to quit talking because I don't know where the AED is if you go down. Um, and so and so it was it was a good time though. But I want to brag on these students for just a minute. This this group is different and, and they're different than what you see other youth groups at camp um, just their demeanor the way they carry their self um, I mean understanding what's important and why they're there um, and, and that's really what motivates me as their leader um, it's just seeing how they're different you see other youth groups when when we get out of worship so kind of how the night goes we go into worship at 6 30 7 o'clock whatever time it is it goes on for an hour and a half or so, and then we break up into our, our church groups, and that's when we, we are by ourselves as a group. And so you see these other churches get out, and they're hooping and hollering and, and cutting out of there, and our group's like, nobody's talking, their head's down, they just want to get to the room, right? They don't know what's happening. Um, and I don't even know if the students know this. They give me a book to go by every night, and they're like, hey, this is your Bible study to go through, and, and I go through it this many times. And it's not because I don't think it's important or I don't think it's good. I just I don't like playing things in those moments because I can't plan what a preacher's going to preach and how God's going to move in their life. So we literally get in there. And I'm like, hey, start talking. Somebody start talking and they just go. Um, and it's completely led by them. And obviously we try to keep them in line and get into where we need to go with the message and, and speaking on it. But they, they lead those groups. That's, that has nothing to do with me whatsoever. Um, and it's just incredible to hear how they can take a message that a preacher preaches that maybe some nights was super high. Me and Bobby were looking at each other like, what is he talking about? And other nights you're like, okay, I, I kind of see where he's going. But that's, to be honest, there are nights that are, where we don't get it every time. Um, we don't quite understand where he's going. And they can take those messages and, and decipher it and try to pull things from it. Um, so it's just encouraging to see. Um, but I want to show you one picture tonight. And it was in the slideshow. Um, just, it shows how our kids are just different. They're just different. So, uh, Mike, if you'll put that picture up. Um, so that's Dylan, Jones, and Carol. And Dylan, most of y'all know Dylan. Dylan was raised in this church, um, I guess, all his life, right? So he's one of those. Um, Carol was the young lady that came back. They're, they're in a dating relationship, just so you have the scene here and know kind of what's going on. Um, Carol gave her life to the Lord. I think it was the second or third night we were there. I think that was a Wednesday night um, that she surrendered her life to the Lord. Uh, Lindsay and I were able to talk with her after our church night, and she was like, hey, I don't, I've been praying. I don't really know who I'm praying to. I don't really know how this works, but, but I need Jesus. Um, <laughs> and then a night later, I said I wasn't going to do this. I'm not going to. Um, this picture was taken, one of the students sent it to me, and I can see what time it was taken. This picture was taken at 10.58 at night. After they have been up since probably 6.30, at least 7 that morning. Probably Dylan, probably not. Dylan probably skipped breakfast, so he probably wasn't there at 7, <laughs> as he was supposed to be. Um, but you just you see that. that That is what it's all about to me. Um, they get it. And, <laughs> all our, our seniors the whole time are like, hey, we can come out and be chaperones. I'm like, time out. No, it's time for you to go, right? Like, <laughs> you got to go. Um, and it's, it's a joke, but it's not a joke at the same time. Some of them, you're like, hey, it's, it's time for you to go, right? Um, and, you know, parents always ask me all the time, man, is my kid get it? Are, are they there? Um, what do you think? And, and to me, that picture right there summarizes that they get it. Um, and so you can, and that's not just them. There were, I don't know how many of y'all went to that prayer chapel um, that night and did that. And I think y'all actually went multiple nights. I actually never went to it because I knew that was kind of their place and I didn't want to infringe on it. I just let them go. Um, so that was at 10.58 at night. Two, two seniors, 
just crying out to the Lord uh, for multiple reasons. Um, and, and I don't know all the reasons, but I know that was taking place. And um, it's just, it's a testimony of, of the kids. It's a testimony of, of the seniors and their leadership um, and, and what they go through. But like I said, parents all the time are asking about it. And my mindset since I've had a kid it has changed. You know, used to, and maybe even some of you that are parents and grandparents have the same thought. You're like, man, I don't want to have to raise a kid in this world, right? I don't want to have to see my grandkids go through the culture and the way it is now. Um, but my mindset has completely changed to be that God has created them in this moment for such a time as this. Um, and I believe it. And I think they believe it and they understand it. Um, so that's it. I want to thank y'all for allowing us to go. It takes a lot of funds. And I know we budget for it. Um, and, and this is a majority of our youth budget is right here, which you just saw. And I know you look at the pictures and you're like, it looks like y'all did absolutely nothing, right? Um, and sometimes it feels like that. Um, but they're up at 7 o'clock every morning, and that's what they're doing at 11 o'clock at night. And it, it's all day long. It, it's, it's no quit. There's not really time for them to go to their rooms and, and to sleep. I mean, I think they get an hour of free time in the afternoons. Um, and, and we make them shower. So that's, that's what they do for their hour of free time because I'm not going to sit around them and worship and smell them. Um, so that was me and Bobby's one rule is you are going to shower. And if they didn't shower, we made sure that they showered. Um, so I mean, it's, just, it's a testimony of you guys and the church and the, and the culture that's in this building um, and how we raise our kids and how we raise our grandkids. So I believe it's important. I want to encourage you to keep encouraging them, keep walking alongside them, keep showing them the ways um, because they're like sponges. Even though you think of little kids are sponges, teenagers are sponges too. Even though they seem hard-headed and they are, they are still sponges and they, and they watch and they view um, and they see what you do. Um, so I want to encourage you to continue um, to do just that. I'm going to close this in prayer, Brother Keith, if you're good with that, and y'all can be dismissed um, at the end of the prayer. But let's pray. God, I thank you for, um, first off, for the church that allows us to do this each year. God, that um, sets aside fun just for us to go. God, to let the kids have fun, God, and to, and to grow closer to one another, but ultimately to grow closer to you. And God, I believe that's what happened this week. God, that week that they were there, God, they were, they were sold out, they were surrendered, and God, with the many songs that we sang when, when over 750 hands were raised in the air just worshiping you. God, it does me good. God, I know it does our pastor good and our other chaperones. God, and sometimes I think that we get more out of it than, than maybe the kids get. And God, I'm thankful for that. God, I'm asking that um, that you would continue to work in their lives. God, that this wouldn't be like we talk about at Camp High when they come back and go to school. God, where they're just they're back to the usual and they forget everything they learned. God, and they forget the fire that you lit inside of them. But God, I'm asking that you would continue to throw fuel on their fire. God, that you would continue to motivate them and encourage them. God, and convict them just to live in a way that they're supposed to live. And God, each of them are in, are in a mission field. And God, in their schools. And God, we know that 72% of our county is unchurched. God, and we can assume that that means most of our county is going to hell if they were to die. And God, I'm praying that, that we would convict our lives. God, as adults in this room, God, the those that we know that, that don't know you, God, neighbors or coworkers or friends, God, that we'd be motivated to share the gospel. God, that we'd be motivated to tell those around us about who you are and what you've done in our life. God, and it's simple as telling our story. God, like many of them have. God, tonight, just telling a little bit about who they are, God, and, and what you've done in their life. God, we may not have all the answers in the scripture, but God, but nobody can combat us when we tell our story and what you've done in our life. God, because it's our story. And God, I'm praying that we would understand that, that we would use it. God, that it would empower us through the power of the Spirit. God, I'm asking that you be with us this week as our students continue to go back to school. God, that you would motivate them, keep them encouraged. God, as us as the church, if we'd walk alongside them and love them and show them the ways. This year, I pray, man.